Hello, people. How are you doing today? Well, I've had some requests for people to give me an update on where we stand with the ring boy situation, people coming forward. And I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on now. Um, I have been shocked by the, mem about the amount of people that have come forward. And more than anything, one thing I've discovered, and um, I always knew that what was going on with Mel Phillips, Pat Patterson, uh, it was horrible stuff. Uh, but the most important thing is that now we have evidence of this. We didn't have evidence. A lot of people didn't want to come forward. And people have been brave enough, former ring boys, to come out and tell me their stories. And underneath here, right here, you will see, and I make you a promise, I don't disclose anything unless you ask me to or you want to do a show with me. But any former ring boys or any other victims, please contact wrestle, wrestlingwiththedevil at gmail.com. Let's talk. And I'll put you in the right direction. Either you could speak to me, uh, keep keep it private. Maybe it's just something you want to get off your chest. You know, this whole impact of this ring ring boy thing had a, has had a big devastation on my family. And what I've learned about Mel Phillips, it's really disturbing. When I seen some things, I realized one thing that a lot of these boys were telling the truth. Mel Phillips was a pedophile, which what made it worse than this is that you had a company with high ranking members in, in, in that company that knew he was. And you got to ask yourself, why did they give this man so much power? He got so much power and did what he wanted to. He would have his film cameras set up in private rooms that he already had lined up at certain stadiums or wherever they were going, armories, schools, or whatever. Mel Phillips was not a good man, people. You'll, you'll, you might hear people out here trying to defend him, but, you know, let them defend him because what, here's what's going to happen. There's going to be all the proof on him released, and it's all going to be released very, very soon, and it's going to be heavy duty, and it's going to prove one thing. Mel Phillips preyed on children. He preyed on 13, 14, 15-year-old boys, sometimes 16, but once they got above that age, Mel grew tired of them because they became stronger, and he could not overtake them. But the fact of the matter is that you would have this man use playing with feet as an excuse to gratify himself. And people may not want to hear that, but it's the truth. And evidence will be presented. The evidence that cannot be denied, people. Not hearsay. Actual evidence. That is what's in this case right now. And the shame part is, it doesn't have a, there's no, these men are dead. There's no way that we can uh, go forward with this and, uh, and charge anybody. But here's the thing. This is Chief J. Strongbow. He, he died about, I think, 2012. I'm not too sure. He was a very big man in the back room. of uh, well, He wor worked the back. He was a booker, and he worked with Pat Patterson. And the most amazing thing is, why did these men, they knew, they knew what Mel was about. Why did they let it go on? Why didn't they stop it? What did Mel have on Vince McMahon? What did he have on them? Why would they let, let him so blatantly go out in the open and do whatever he wants? They would see, I heard this, this one guy told me a story about when he went into uh, um, uh, a restaurant and seen Mel sitting there by himself with a group of Boy Scouts. Or you hear stories about Mel driving around with boys in his van or in his car. I'm sorry, in his car. And, you know, these stories I'm telling you, these are the minor stories, people. These are nothing. You will be shocked when you hear the rest of the story. You know, I, this is when I wish my brother was alive. 
because he could finally see that everything he said now has proof behind it. And you got some people out there defending these people. And like what I like to say to the, these people, you got something coming that you're not going to like. And you're going to look really foolish in the end. I'm not going to stand up here or sit up here and call a man a pedophile if I do not have 100% proof. That would make this show look like garbage. People would stop watching and say that I lied about a man. And it's the worst thing in this world that you can call another human being. It's a pedophile. A sexual abuser. There's certain things that you do not want to. But I could say this because I know now for sure, 100%. I used to be 95%. Now I'm 100%. There's no doubt because of the evidence that have been overturned. I'm sorry, turned up. But right now, I'm obligated not to talk too much about the evidence. I can't. But the evidence is there. This is where you got to believe me that you will be seeing the evidence soon. You'll Very soon, you'll be seeing this evidence. And I'm not coming up here for clicks and views. I don't have to do this show right here. I can just keep my mouth shut. But this man was a very bad man. You know what he did? He grabbed... I, I'm going to give you a hint of some of the things that he did. What he did is he made these kids rely on him. He befriended them. Then he got rude with them. He he, he would he would uh, beat them down, uh, uh, and physically and mentally. When I say beat, people say, "Well, say beat." Yeah, when you jump on somebody and you start wrestling them and take their leg and put it up against your groin for personal pleasure. Yes, when you throw people down to the ground and you try to overwhelm them with your strength, boys, you don't do it. To the bigger ones, you do it to the little ones. And I just heard a couple of disturbing stories. People that people that had guts. These people that are coming out telling these stories have guts to come forward and talk about this. You know, look at this. This is my brother when he was 13 years old with a wrestling cap on. He loved wrestling. But you know who loved wrestling more than them? The guys that work there, because they use wrestling to get to get control of these young boys. That young, sweet, innocent kid right there, my brother. What you know, and it's you look at right here. There he is at ringside. You see him down there, looking up into the ring. He sees three. He sees these uh, the invaders, I believe they are, and uh, he's in awe of this. And what Mel did is he used this. These kids that were in awe of this stuff. Because some of these kids would actually do what Mel wanted. Not many of them, but some of them. They actually went through. Because they figured that if they kept Mel happy, they would get be able to see the world of wrestling. And that's what they did. They used the world of wrestling as their tool. Their tool. These were predators. It, it's just like if you watch... Uh, this guy Diddy now that's being charged. He used his industry as a way to lure people in and take advantage of them. And that's what they did here. See, this just cannot be Mel because these other people allowed it. They seen this man walking around with these group of boys. They seen this man disappear in the locker rooms with for a half hour, an hour, doing no, we'll get into that part but doing things. And you know, the FBI has dropped the ball on this because all they had to do is go look for the, the certain people that I've spoke to. If they did a little bit better of a job and tried a little bit harder, they would have had these people face. They would have been able to charge that whole organization and put an end to a bunch of evil people and save a lot of people's uh, emotions people that would go on to have very tough lives because of what happened to them. You know, you're talking 14, 15 year old innocent boys that don't know they're just getting ready to turn, you know, they're, they're just uh, hitting puberty. And then the first thing they learn about sex is from this creep right here, this horrible human being, Mel Phillips. 
I want to play you something too. And this is why you do not give Linda McMahon. I want to, I want you, I'm going to play this and I want you to think, hear this very carefully. This is what, why Linda McMahon does not deserve a break in this. Uh, people say, oh, she had nothing to do with anything, you know, all that stuff. Uh, that's not true. Uh, I'm going to show you the things that she has something to do with. If I can find it, did I? Okay, here we go. One second, please. And I've played this before, but I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, let me get to sip up here. Let me take this down. I'm sorry here. Here we go. Okay. I want you to hear what Linda McMahon says in this. It's very important that you hear what Linda McMahon says. She's going to admit something. And she's going to say that it was really nothing. But I want you to understand that this guy used kids' feet as a way of getting his pleasure. Okay, so let's get to that one second. Okay, people, here you go right here. I'm going to play this. 22-year-old Tom Cole was hired as a ring boy for the World Wrestling Federation when he was 13 years old. For the next three years, he says he was sexually abused by his supervisor, Mel Phillips, who Cole says has a foot fetish. And Cole says there were other abusers besides Phillips. I was grabbed on numerous occasions in my on my testicles, on my buttocks by uh, Pat Patterson of the World Wrestling Federation. And uh, Terry Garvin propositioned me when I was 16, offered me cocaine and all kinds of drugs to uh, have sex with him. When I refused, I was let go from the company when I was 16. And then I returned again when I was 19. I was let go again because I refused Terry Garvin's advances. So Cole hired a lawyer and ended up with a $55,000 settlement to cover lost wages. As for Mel Phillips, he was fired from the company. But Cole's family says firing Phillips wasn't enough, and they were at the Stanford headquarters today demanding justice. I would like to see Mel Phillips put behind bars where the hell he belongs. Because he's a child molester than me, and he can just, it's enough for him just to step down from his job. He's walking the streets, he's molesting children. The man should be put in jail. World Wrestling Federation President Linda McMahon says an outside investigator concluded there was no evidence of Phillips molesting employees, but the company fired him anyway. First he was put on suspension pending investigation. The investigation was taking so long, there was so much negative happening with it that we finally told Mel that it was better for him and better for our company for him to go on in a different way. McMahon doesn't deny Phillips had a foot fetish, but she said it had become a joke and was... You hear that, people? It became a joke. The foot fetish became a joke. I'm sorry, my... Uh, a joke where they actually... This was used for that, for him to pleasure himself with the boys. The foot feet lock were the way to get to what he wanted to accomplish. And it's a joke blown out of proportion you call a man filming your feet for hours at a time and playing with your feet and making you cry when you're only 13 years old and re recording it for his own um sexual purposes if you call if she calls that normal then obviously there's something wrong with her also and i think my brother hit that right on the right on the button there's something wrong one second that's there's something wrong with her also Right there to make that statement alone about this man right here. Oh, look at that. This is a picture that no one's seen before. Hmm. I wonder if there's many more of these. Uh, so here, there you have my brother saying, and he said it best. He said that he was hurting these boys. He was hurting them when he was doing this. It was hardcore wrestling, grinding but it went beyond that in some situations. And you're going to hear about all that stuff. There's no denying this no more. There's no, Linda McMahon, you just said that this became a running joke. 
bringing 13, 14 year old boys into your business, your business, yours and your husband's business, letting this man use your locker rooms or use the money that you pay for them to get hotel rooms to do this to these boys. And not only that, people, there are other employees there involved in this, and we will be we will be uh, putting that out there. We have discovered another person that has been put, that that was involved, and um, you'll recognize his face, and you'll know who it is when we put that stuff out. So this just isn't one or two people. This is a group of people that worked for the WWF at that time and stayed many years beyond that and were involved with these boys. These boys who are now brave, older men coming out telling their stories. Some of these guys don't even want to show their face. They, they have grandchildren. We hear about this stuff. We hear about these companies that do this to people. If the feds did their job back then, which they did not, this would have saved a lot of uh, destroyed lives from a person like uh, Vince, Linda, her, their lawyer, uh, all those people that were involved in this. Everybody in the ring crew knew what was going on. Even the ones that were paid that were working there, everybody knew. Everybody that worked there knew what Mel was doing. And they did not stop it. They turned an eye to it. So it could destroy George, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Joe Paterno's life with, with Sandusky. But it's okay for this creep to do it. To all those boys. And I'm going to tell you guys that come out here attacking me saying that I'm lying and saying that uh, this didn't happen. You're going to look like real fools. Did you just say that woman on that say, oh, it was a running joke that she played with the boy's feet? Can you imagine that woman saying it was a running joke? Ha ha, Linda McMahon, a running joke. You know, at your age, you should look in the mirror and think about what you said. And these all these young men that got had their lives ripped from them and destroyed because of your... You, your husband, and your company letting these people do this stuff. What is it that Mel had on your man, your boy, I'm sorry, your husband, Vince McMahon? What did he have on him? Why couldn't he stop it? Pat Patterson, why couldn't he stop it? He says, well, he's gay. That's all he was. He was he's a gay man. Well, if you were just a gay man, you would have stopped it. Chief J. Strongbow, you're a booker. Why didn't you stop it? And why did you go after the people like Bruno when they came out and they said what happened? And you tried and you destroyed them for 20, 30 years. And they had to beg you, come back to your company, make a little bit of money before they died so you could put them in the Hall of Fame. This, com this company, you know, I'm not knocking TKO that took it over. I only wish them the best. But I'm talking about Vince McMahon and all these all these people around him, the ones that destroyed all these lives, these women's lives, all these lives here. This is only going to get those people that come forward because they're the ones holding it in for all these years. You know, you talk to these poor, these poor men and they were like, well, at that time we didn't realize it. We didn't know. We didn't understand the foot thing and him putting the foot between his legs against his crotch and stuff. They didn't understand these boys. They were innocent. They were virgins. They didn't know nothing about sex. The first thing they found out about sex was from Mel. And it was allowed by this company. So people, you're going to see a lot of things come disclosed. A lot of things. So just be patient. It's being worked on right now, and it's going to be a very big story, and it's going to be the story of the Ring Boys with facts, with proof, evidence.
all types of proof and evidence. And for those people that have sent this stuff to me, these people that have come forward to me, thank you for trusting me because I will not let you down. And once again, any former ring boys or any other victims they want to come forward and talk to me, I'll put you in the right direction if you want to talk to somebody else. If you just want to talk to me, and that's fine too. But anything you say to me stays between us, unless you say otherwise. So my right underneath here, uh, wrestlingwiththedevil at gmail.com. Send me an email and we can talk. And for those that have come forward, thank you very much because your voices are finally going to be heard. With that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody.